And we are going on the beat. And the big news today, the Bears front. No practice. NFL forced the team to cancel OTAs today for breaking the rules. So we kick things off with our Bears insider. He is the great Josh Schrock. Schrock in awe on Twitter. I love that Twitter name. Okay, is this a big deal? They lose, it's like a slap on the wrist. They lose one OTA practice. And if they're trying to set a new culture, maybe it's worth the price. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. Probably in the long run, run, it's big for a team that needs a lot of practice time, right? They're trying to instill new schemes on both sides of the ball. But I think it probably boils down to Matt Eberflus' intensity, and he just wants to, like you said, set a culture. You practice hard all the time. And for a team that has a lot of guys that are coming in needing to prove themselves to a new regime that didn't draft them or sign them initially, um, I think that's probably what it boils down to. Okay, so explain to our fine viewers at home who go, well, how would you get caught with a player we were laughing on the air? Oh, they must have made Eddie Jackson start tackling, and so he picked up the phone and went, yeah, could I have Mr. Goodell's <laughs> office, please? Yes. Commissioner, Eddie Jackson. You didn't get this from me, but they're making us hit too much. But it's not like that. Wasn't there someone from the Players Association yep. that was there? Yeah, so the NFLPA, this time of year, they go around to each camp to just do routine check-in, see what's going on, and they witness some contact. So they go to the Bears and they say, hey, we saw this. Uh, just keep giving us practice footage from all of your practice. We want to make sure you're not, you don't continue to do this. And they got caught doing it twice. Correct. So yeah. after they said, okay, no problem, we'll give you the tape, <laughs> yeah. the next thing you know, they're doing it again. Yep. Correct. So they smacked him. Now, the Seahawks, as I did my homework today, mm -hmm. the Seahawks have done this repeatedly. Yep. They lost a fifth round pick, Correct. they lost a week of OTAs. That's a way bigger deal. That's far down the road like the Bears aren't stupid enough to do this again correct yeah you have to do it multiple times to get Dr. Draft pick or a week of OTAs and I think a fun note that has no bearing on anything four of the last five teams to get docked an OTA made the playoffs that season hmm. <laughs> maybe just maybe all right Aaron Rodgers is on the field with the Packers today and he said he will definitely retire as a Packer he didn't say whether that means signing a one-day deal after he goes somewhere else, but he certainly indicated here is Aaron about retiring as a Packer. Look, some conversations had to be had, and I'm happy they were had, and, and I appreciated the honesty. There were some very uh, direct conversations. And, uh, I, I haven't really shied away from conflict uh, during my time here. Uh, because I feel like it leads to a resolution that's usually uh, positive for the organization and for everybody involved. And I'm not saying it was hand-to-hand -hand conflict or combat. It was uh, some, just some real serious uh, heart-to-hearts. And as someone who loves this franchise so much, I felt like it was important to share my uh, opinions about certain things and my vision for how this place could continue to, to improve and get better long after I'm done. And I give... Uh, Mark and Brian and Russ a lot of credit for uh, that time and those conversations and the relationship changed for sure. I mean it really did. Uh, I saw some really positive things with everybody involved. It wasn't like this uh, you know, in a relationship and, and your partner's telling you that you're the cause of all the problems. It wasn't that wasn't what I was doing. Uh, it was it was a lot of uh, issues and potential solutions. And I'm very proud to be a part of the solution. And those three especially were a big part of the solution as well. So do you, do you think you'll finish your career here? Yes, definitely. Will you retire here? He said, yes, definitely. So that should mean the drama is going away, right? Should, right? But with Aaron Rodgers, you really, you really never know. Something could happen next week. He wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, and all of a sudden he's got to have another meeting, or he's you know, asking for a different contract, or he wants a different old receiver that got cut three years ago to come back in. So, Correct. you know, nothing ever changes. So as you look at that team, there's no Devontae Adams mm -hmm. anymore. They've had some coaching shakeups because some guys came here. One went to the, to the Broncos as a head coach. What do you expect from Green Bay? Really good defense. They pretty much went kind of the Broncos mold of old Peyton Manning, right? We're going to load up on one side of the ball. We're going to run it a lot not give up a ton of points and not ask Aaron Rodgers to just chuck it deep all the time because Devontae's not there anymore. Um, so it's, they're, good. they're still going to be really good, but it's not going to be that explosive offense, I think. It's just going to be more defense-oriented. Do you think they are the best team in the division? Yeah, hands down, but that doesn't say much. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I figured you'd say. 
All right, let's talk about former Bear Akeem Hicks. He signed a one-year $10 million deal, including incentives, to become a Tampa Bay Buck. Well, he met the media for the first time today down in Tampa, and he took uh, what some are calling a shot at his former team. You know, when I came into the league, I had Drew Brees and Tom Brady who were my first two quarterbacks. And then I went to Chicago. It wasn't Drew Brees and Tom Brady, we'll just say that, right? And um, so uh, it's, um, I feel spoiled. I feel spoiled to have somebody on the other side of the ball that can deliver all the time. And he's proven it over the years. Was that a draw for you in your free agency? This is to be in a, with an established quarterback, an established team offense, or, or it's just kind of everything fell into place with Tampa? No, definitely. It was definitely a draw. I, I would say that, um, you know, it benefits a defense to have a quarterback that can control the clock, the ball, and the field position. And um, that's what we have here. Okay. Now, look, he stated the obvious. Yeah. He had Mitch. He had... Trying to think who all he had here. Mike Glennon and Andy Dalton and Nick Foles. It is what it is. Do you take that as a shot at the Bears or he's just stating the obvious? Yeah, Akeem Hicks told no lies. I mean, he had nine, nine quarterbacks started a game in his six seasons here. That included Matt Barkley, Brian Hoyer. These guys are not good quarterbacks. It was Jimmy Cl no, 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 it wouldn't no. have been Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Yeah, I mean, he didn't tell any lies. It's not a dig, but it just goes to show you we talk about Justin Fields a lot. That's why this season's so big for him, right? Because we saw with the Bengals, Joe Burrow's first season, even though they didn't win a lot, he showed enough to bring a lot of other free agents there to say, hey, we're going to play for this guy. So if Justin Fields can show that he's a good quarterback, then that'll draw free agents in. Akeem Hicks said he feels spoiled to have Tom Brady at quarterback. And, you know, he used to be with the Patriots and with the Saints, as he alluded to. Uh, he also said that the Bears never called him about coming back, which leads me to feel you and I are on the same page. If that dude, he said I would have been interested in the Bears. Yep. Obviously, they weren't interested because they are not trying to win this year, right? That's correct. That's how I'd read into it. I, I think if you're not going to call a guy who's really productive in an area of need, it pretty much just says, we gutted the roster. We want to get a high draft pick. We just want to see our coach succeed or maybe our young quarterback succeed, and we'll just try again to actually build a team next year. Correct. Yeah. So it's not like they're looking at this team. And I know there are people out there. I've got friends who go, dude, they can win eight, nine, ten games with this team. And I just don't see it. No. No, I don't see it either. And I think another big part of the Hicks thing or any other free agents that's left is they have so much cap next year, they want to roll what they have this year still available over. They don't want to just waste it on a guy who can maybe help them win one extra game. What's the point? And that will put them in the $150 million range, correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out who's out there yeah. because receiver and perhaps tackle, tackle, yeah. left tackle, and then they're going to have their number one pick back. So yeah. they should have the ability to remake their roster. I'm not telling you they win the Super Bowl in 23, but they should be markedly better. The roster should look yeah, markedly better next year if they do everything right. All right, you'll be out there tomorrow for the last OTA? Correct. And they're going to let you guys watch? That's what they say from All afar, right. a couple fields. So follow him again at Schrock and Awe.